If you've ever been scrolling on the internet and seen some amazing gaming computers with awesome custom loops and just wondered, how do people make that? Well, stick around as I'm gonna be talking about how to bend hard to do. Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to bend hard tubing, the process behind it and the things that you're going to need to start creating your custom loop for your very own computer. Let's get to it. So you're going to need a few things to be able to start bending hard tubing. The first thing is going to be something to cut the hard tubing with. So in the case of PMMA, you're going to need some type of saw or other cutting tool like this. A pipe cutter type tool is not going to work with PMMA even though it'll work with PETG, PMMA will shatter if you use a pipe cutting type tool. Next, to go with the cutting tool, I have a small vise here that's gonna fit 12 millimeter and 14 millimeter outer diameter tubing. This is gonna keep the tube nice and still while I'm cutting to size, so this is extremely handy to have. Next, we have a silicone core that you're gonna use to slide inside of the tubing so that you can keep the tubing's shape as you heat it. This is an absolute necessary part of any tube bend, so do not bend tubes without this. Here we have a deburring tool, as you can deburr the inside as well as the outside of hard tubing. You can use this with either PETG or PMMA. This will prevent the tubing from putting cuts into any of your O-rings and causing any leaks. So extremely important tool right here. Finally, we have a heat gun. This particular one is a Wagner Ferno 700 and it is able to select many different temperature settings as well as fan speeds, which is super handy if you're gonna be doing PETG or PMMA as they take separate temperatures. This gun is able to cover all of those temperature ranges. Lastly, this is not a necessary tool to use for bending, but it helps a lot to make sure you're getting the proper degrees on your bends. This is a mandrel bending tool, and all you're gonna do is slip the tubing into the correct size hole. It's able to do 12 millimeter outer diameter and 14 millimeter outer diameter. And you can see these markings here allow you to see what degrees you're bending your tube to. So this is a great way to sanity check your bends. It's also great to put in after you're done bending and holding it in place. That way the tubing will cool off and won't spring back so that you can keep the exact bend degree that you want. You can get all of the tools I just showed you besides the heat gun in Corsair's XT Hardline Tube Bending Kit. This is designed to go specifically with their XT Hardline tubing that's either 12 or 14 millimeters. So it's just a great pairing as their PMMA tubing is really good quality. And this kit is a great way to get started in hard tube bending. Now that you know everything you need to bend hard tubing, we can get into the actual process of bending it. Go ahead and insert your core into your tubing. So when it comes to bending tubing, I always will go on the long side. So that means leaving enough tubing on this side of the bend and enough tubing on this side of the bend that allows me to trim it down as I need. That way I can get the bend nice and parallel with the fittings and not have to worry about where that bend falls on the actual tubing. So that's my main rule for single bend tubes. Always go a little bit long. That way you can trim it down and not have to redo it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat gun on 280 degrees Celsius or 530 degrees Fahrenheit and I run the fan at the highest setting. So what I do is I hold the tube about two and a half to three inches away from the nozzle here, and I just spin it like a rotisserie chicken. After a little bit, I'll start to heat one singular area up until it starts to become pliable. And then from there, I'm gonna to start to move out and heat up outside of where that single point is so that the bend is able to be accomplished without 
any type of weird deformity of the tubing because the rest of it is not hot enough. So as you can see, the tube is starting to get a little bit pliable and is able to start bending a little bit. So I'm gonna heat up the outsides of where that bend is occurring. And I'm gonna slowly rotate the tube to heat up the rest of the tube as well so that we're not creating any weird deformities in the tubing due to it bending without it being hot enough. Again, this is just a process that takes time and patience. And once you get it, you'll start to bend tubes with no problem. As I'm heating, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on both ends to create this bend a little bit. And as the tube heats up, it becomes more pliable and allows the tube to bend with the pressure that I'm putting on it. It's just a process of heating, turning, heating, turning, a little bit of pressure, bending until you get the tube to the temperature where it just becomes very pliable and you can finish the bend. As you can see, it's starting to get much easier to bend and we're just about there. So the other thing that I like to do is I like to add this bending tool in to finish the bend. That way I know I'm getting a really good 90 degrees and not, you know, 87 or 93 or any number of degrees, but in fact I'm getting a nice 90 degree bend on the tube. So I'll go ahead and finish that off by just bending it like this and then holding it in place. As you can see, that's a nice straight 90 degree angle right there. We can just hold it there until it is done cooling off and it will stay in place. So once you're done cutting your tubing to length, you're going to want to deburr the inside by using the deburr tool by sticking it inside the tube with the pointy side into the tube and just spinning the deburr tool until you deburr the inside fully. You can take a look at it and make sure that it looks nice and feels smooth and then do the exact same to the outside of the tube with the part of the deburr tool that goes in. So you just stick the tube in, spin it until the tube looks nice and deburred and feels nice and smooth. Now another thing that you can do to smooth out the end of your tube before you deburr it, so if it has excessive ridges or maybe isn't completely flat, you can take a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and go ahead and sand the end of the tube until it looks nice and flat and straight. And then you can go ahead with the deburr. So this is a really nicely deburred outside of the tube as well as inside and a nice flat end. So you wanna get your tubing to look as close to this as possible before you start putting it into your fittings and tightening everything up. That way nothing on the end here will cut your O-rings. So really the main ingredient with bending hard tubing is gonna be patience. Now I demonstrated the most simple tube run that you can possibly do, which is a run with only one bend. If you have runs that require more than one bend, you can check out my more complex bending tutorial by clicking here. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.